Okay, everyone, I'm going to show you guys how to use the bakery, which is one of the best lighting tools on the asset store. What it does is it creates light maps and bakes them out. And uh, as you can see here, are the results and they're absolutely amazing. Here's an indoor example here. And then I'll show you guys a, uh, an outdoor example, uh, which is right here. So the bakery is in the Unity Asset Store. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. The only requirement is uh, that you have to make sure your 3D artists or the 3D art you are using to bake light maps on are properly UV'd. I repeat, make sure they are properly UV'd for light map baking. Uh, when they are, you get um, you get some pretty good results here. So I'm going to show you guys how to use it um, right now. Okay, so let's take a look at our scene with no light maps here not very interesting as you can see here here's the outdoor let's look at the interior all right so this is without the uh, light maps this is just uh, with no lights at all so let's go ahead and uh, make some light maps okay so the first thing you want to do is make sure you download the bakery from the UV asset store I'll put a link in the description below and also I'll put a link over here. Next, you wanna to go to window, you wanna to go to package manager. And you wanna give it a second to load here. And then just go ahead and type in bakery and it should just pop up, there it is. And this is what it looks like here. So if you haven't already, go ahead and download it, link in the description, uh, go to window package manager and just type in the bakery and it should pop up go ahead and download and then uh, import I've already downloaded so I don't need to re-download it okay so after you've installed the bakery you're going to notice a new menu here called the bakery where you have uh, some cool options here I've yet to use utilities um, I haven't used much stuff over here so um, and I haven't used um, global shader tweaks but what I have used is the these lights here uh, the directional light the skylight and the point light uh, which have worked uh, very well. So we'll, we'll be using these three lights uh, in our example here. So let's go ahead and start with uh, indoor lighting. So let me show you my lighting setup here. So here I have where I have my lights. I have a couple of point lights in this scene here. And you can see, you know, you can change the intensity over here, just like, you know, regular Unity lighting, you can change the intensity, the color, shadow spread, range, uh, sample, um, uh, legacy sampling, projection, uh, projection mass, bit mass, and indirect intensity. But today we're just going to, only going to be, um, we would only just mess with the intensity. So as you can see here, I have it set to four. Uh, right now we're just going to just use uh, just regular uh, white color for now for these point lights here. Um, and I have kind of like the, the point lights kind of buried in intensity here. Next is the directional light. You would just go up here, hit, uh, click on directional light, and uh, to create a directional light, and it works just like you need directional light. So I have the intensity set to two. Next, a skylight. Always put in a skylight because it adds, you know, an extra extra lighting uh, to the scene. Um, it's not a requirement, but for this uh, for this scene, I'm going to add a skylight, and I'm going to have the intensity set to uh, three. So those are the lights I have in my scene. Since this is indoor lighting, I do have, um, you know, some point lights here to kind of like, you know, illuminate, you know, the scene. Next, you want to go to your bakery tab here. Um, so if your ba if, if the bakery tab doesn't show up, you don't see it anywhere, you would just go to bakery. You would just go to render light map and then your bakery tab will show up and you can dock that anywhere you want. I'm just going to dock it here. And we're going to go ahead and go over um, in this menu here okay so as I mentioned before we're doing indoor lighting so let's go ahead and uh, set this up now over here um, the first thing you want to do is take a look at the uh, texels per unit now since this is indoor lighting and I don't want it to look nice I want to set that to 100 you don't want to go no more than 100 and I usually do this for indoor lighting for outdoor lighting I will do something like you know 25 to 50 or in this case we're gonna bump it up to 100 uh, the max resolution. Um, so this will basically show you how um, 
um, how big of a resolution your light texture maps will, uh, will be. Have a, you can go anywhere from 256 to all the way to 4096. Uh, the bigger the resolution, obviously, the longer the render time. Uh, for this case, for example purposes, we're going to keep it at 256 and see how it looks. And then we're going to do another version that's like uh, 1024. So right now, we're going to stick with uh, 256. So we're in simple mode. Now in order to get that nice fine ambient occlusion, we need to go to advanced mode. Let's go to advanced mode. Now you got some extra stuff here. We're not going to go through all that. We're just going to go straight to ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion is just hidden right here. You click this little arrow, and then it shows you the ambient occlusion settings. Now notice the intensity is set to zero. Let's set that to one so we can get some nice, beautiful ambient occlusion here. And I think we're all set up here. One thing you do have to make sure, always make sure what is going to be rendered with light maps uh, is set to static. So always make sure your, your props have are set to static here. So I'm just kind of double checking make sure everything is static. I do have uh, light probes here and I do have reflection probes. Now you don't have to have those, those are up to you. Um, when I got this asset, uh, this room asset from the Unity Asset Store, it kind of came set up with reflection probes already. All right, so now that everything is set up here, we're gonna go back to the bakery here. Double check and make sure uh, our settings are good. So we want 100 texels per unit, max resolution at 256, Minimum resolution at 16. Um, I think we're going to turn the samples up to 64. Yeah, we're going to we're going to bump that up. All right, I think we're good here. So let's go ahead and, and hit render. It's going to um, ask you to save, so make sure you save and watch the magic happen. Now this is going to take some time to render, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and uh, come back uh, when it's done. Oh yeah, it also will tell you how many lap maps are going to be rendered, just in case. So we're going to hit continue. Okay, alright, see you guys in a second. Alright, so here are the results. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. So take a look. As you can see, it's actually not too bad here. You guys go ahead and take a look at the, at the results. I think it actually looks uh, pretty, pretty good, actually. Alright. So this is with the, the current settings that we have here. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna um, go ahead and bump up the settings. We're gonna go back to our bakery settings here. And we're gonna keep the texel per unit at 100, but we're gonna increase the max resolution to about uh, 1024. We're gonna uh, kind of up, up, up the quality on this bake here. You can see there's a little bit of artifacts here. So we're going to see if upping the, um, uh, the quality will uh, improve uh, improve the quality here. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit render. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And I'll be back when it's done. Alright guys, let's look at the results. Not too bad. It actually looks pretty good. Very nice and uh, clean light, light maps here. And this is done with 1024 by 1024. Yeah, this looks great. Looks really good. All right, so next, let's go ahead and check out some uh, some outdoor lighting. Uh, we're gonna build some light mats for an outdoor scene. Coming up right now. Okay, so we got this town here. I just wouldn't uh, grab this from the Unity Asset Store. I'll leave a link to this below as well, so you guys can check this out for yourself. But this is going to be for our outdoor demo. We're going to use this to, to play around with the bakery and see what we can get out of it. Once again, do remember that these um, that this city uh, has been UV'd for light mapping. So if you're a, if, if you're building a scene or you got a 3D model, just make sure you uh, you do the proper UVs for light mapping. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the bakery. Next, we're gonna go to directional light. We're gonna create a directional light, and we're gonna set that to two, 
And let's, uh, let's see, maybe have a point like that. Okay, so you can kind of see the direction that my directional light is going here. Next, we're going to create a skylight, and the skylight is going to give us, you know, an extra boost of lighting here. And we're going to set that to 2. Alright, actually we're going to uh, set the directional light to 3, just to see what happens here. Okay, cool. Now we're going to go to our bakery tab here. Um, just again, if you don't have that bakery tab, um, you can uh, just uh, pull it out from here. Just go to render light map, and then it'll pop up. So if I close this tab, go to bakery, render light map, there's our tab, and we're just going to dock it here. Okay, so we want, so you're probably be, will probably be in simple mode, so you want to make sure you're in advanced mode here. Uh, since this is outdoor lighting, it doesn't have to be 100 texels per unit. It can be like somewhere like in the low end, like 25. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at uh, 100. Uh, we're going to do, um, actually, let's try 25. Let's do 25 just to see what it looks like. And we're going to do our max resolution at a low end at 256. We're going to go down to our ambient occlusion. If you don't have that open, just click the little arrow here. And we're going to set that to 1. It's already been set to 1. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit render. And see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until this is done. Alright, let's look at our results. Not too bad. I like this. I like this. Looking very good. Looking very good. Alright, so this is with uh, the Texel density set to 25 and the light map set to 256. So let's bump that up. So let's go here. We're going to go up here and let's set the Texel density to 100 and let's set the max resolution to 1024 and, uh, and then we'll come back and see how that looks. This is how it looks now. Actually, it looks pretty good for 256 by 256, honestly. But, uh, but yeah, let's see how it looks on 1024 by 1024. All right, so let's take a look at our results here. Looking pretty good. Yes, the quality here is actually really nice. Let's take a look at here. Very good, very good. I like like, I like the shading on here. Uh, the shadows look pretty good. And again, this is with the settings with the Texas per unit at 100 and max resolution at 1024 by 1024 here. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do some post-processing real quick. Let's uh, let's make this look really, really, really good. Yes, so what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna create a empty game object. We're just gonna call this post processing. All right. And then we're just going to just go ahead and just create a new post-processing post profile here, uh, which is actually pretty easy to do. So we're going to go ahead to create post-processing profile. We'll just call this the city for now. Uh, next, let's, we're going to go ahead and find our camera. And we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we're just going to call this post post two because I already have a, a post processing layer there, so we're going to call this post two. All right, we're going to go back to our main main camera, and we're going to change out this post processing layer and use this one instead. All right. Next, we're going to go here, and we're going to go ahead and add a post processing volume, and we're going to add that here. And we're going to make it global. And we're going to add an effect. We're going to start with ambient occlusion to test and make sure everything is working correctly. Let's find our camera here. Okay, so our camera is there. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, let's try out the ambient occlusion here. And we're going to turn up the intensity there. I think we can see it in our scene here, scene view. Yeah, we can see it in scene view, okay. So we'll just bump it up just a little bit. Uh, we're going to do too much with the thickness here. Now let's go ahead and go to auto exposure. Let's add some auto exposure here. And let's see what results we'll, we'll get here when we mess with the, the auto exposure. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna turn up the exposure just a teeny, 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 teeny bit. Just kind of slightly to get that light, that, that sun look here. All right, let's add another one. Let's add the, the blue. And we're gonna turn all these on, even though we're probably not gonna use them all. We're just gonna turn the bloom just a little slightly bit, slightly. And uh, let's go ahead. To so fact, let's see what else we got. Chromatic aberration, I don't think we need to mess with that. Color grading, yeah, let's mess with color grading. Let's see what we can pull with uh, color grading here. We're gonna turn all these on. We're gonna mess with every single one of these and see what we can get out of this. So we have a warm temperature for a nice warm look and then we have the more cool temperature, which is more of a cool look here. But I think I'm gonna go with the more more warm look. We have a tint to tint the colors if you wanna tint the colors in a certain way. Uh, we're gonna tint it with just a little, little bit, just a little bit. Hue shift, I don't think we need to do anything with that. Post exposure, I don't think we need to do anything with that. So we're just kind of leave that alone. Hue shift, nope, don't need to do anything with that. Some cool colors though. Do we need to turn down the saturation? Nah. But if you're making a scary game and you want to turn down that saturation, saturation, this is how you do it. To get that like, you know, that creepy, creepy look. We have the contrast here. I'm just gonna bump up the contrast just a little bit. Just a little bit here. Uh, gamma, gain, lift, uh, I don't think I need to mess with those too much. Maybe just gamma just a tiny bit there. And we're gonna add another effect here. Let's see what else we have. We have depth of field. Uh, depth of field is always fun to play with. I, I, I love playing with depth of field. So let's get our camera here. Uh, let's see, we're actually gonna go ahead and move our camera. Uh, see how this is kind of blown out here? Yeah, that means we need to uh, probably lower the exposure some. Exposure a little bit. A little bit too high here. Yeah, about right there. Much better, much better. Yeah, exposure was a little bit too high there. Uh, okay, let's go back to our main camera. Um, let's see, let's, maybe I'll position the camera somewhere interesting, maybe like right here. So that we kind of maybe focus the bike here. Well, I kind of want to see everything else, so maybe like that. All right, so to position my camera there in that exact spot, I'm gonna hit Control shift f And notice the camera changed to where I am pointing my, uh, my camera in the scene view. All right, let's play around with Death of Field. Death of Field is always fun to play with. So we're gonna just turn all these on here. And uh, let's see, we're gonna change the, the aperture there. Let's see, okay, so let's focus, let's focus more on the bike. And we're gonna change that focal distance a little bit here. Until we get something uh, we like. Let's see, get the focal distance right there. Actually, well, maybe like right there. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, so I just need to pull the camera out a little bit. All right, so there's the there's the process here. So now we're, we're uh, focused on the, the bike here. Uh, you can change the focal length, you know, so however you want it. So maybe you want to blur next to the bike to make make the bike pop out. Maybe you want a little bit of that background there, so you can change that by messing around with the, the focal length there. Alright, another effect. Let's see what else we have. We have gain. Don't think I need to do anything with that. I'm sorry, grain. Not gain, grain. So yeah, I'm just going to leave that alone here. Uh, lens distortion, motion blur, spatial reflection, and vignette. Uh, we can always add vignette. Just, just 
turn up the intensity just a little bit. We have a little vignette. So, so you could also use this to create like, you know, when the player has low health and you get that, you know, the red that comes up. And this is a good way to do it. You can do that right here like that. So if the player is good and then they're low health, they're like, oh no, I'm dying. Or when the player is getting health, you can change that to green. It's, they just hit a health, health packet and it turns green like that. Okay, there's no other effects I'm going to add here. Uh, what I w would like to do is kind of do like a um, kind of like a scary type of scene with the um, with what we have here, just to show you guys some cool stuff here. So maybe I'll angle it like that so we can get this dark area here. Maybe we'll have like a creepy looking street view. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and play around with some of these settings here. So. Um, one thing we want to do is uh, mess around. Let's see. Let's start from the, we'll start from the top here. With the auto exposure. We're gonna turn that down slightly like that. Uh, the bloom can stay where it is. We can turn it up. We can actually use some chromatic aberration. We can turn that up to give it like that weird, like oh my god, weird looking look. Temperature, maybe we'll. I don't. The temperature's not gonna matter because this is gonna be. Um, it's not gonna have any saturation here. Very little saturation. Uh, next contrast. I'm gonna turn up the contrast a little bit more like that. Uh, that the filth is fine. Then we turn up the grain to give it that grainy, creepy look here. Uh, we can turn up the grain luminance. Uh, we're going to leave that alone. Uh, and then the next thing we would need to do is uh, obviously we need to change the lighting here. So I'm going to go to lighting and environment and I'm just going to grab a darker skybox. Uh, it needs to be a little bit darker. I don't have a night skybox, so I'm just going to just edit this really fast here in the inspector. Uh, we're just going to take the tint color and we're going to just make it a lot darker. Just like that. You can also mess around with the exposure, but in this case we're just going to make it like nice and nice and dark. And the last thing is the actual lights themselves. We're going to take the intensity and we're going to turn it down to maybe about one and then same thing with the direction of light we're going to turn that to about maybe one point one point five all right and i think we're good here so let's go ahead and to the bakery and let's go ahead and uh, bake this out so i'm going to go ahead and put the video on pause and when i come back i'll show you guys the results all right, let's see what we got here. All right, not too bad. Although it is still a little bright. Yeah, it's still still too bright. Looks like nights. Let's look at it's, it's nighttime, but with a lot of lights. So let's go back to our directional light, and let's go even darker. Let's go 0.75, and let's take that skylight down to point maybe. 25. And let's go ahead and bake. And once again, I'm going to put this on pause and um, I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so it's a still a little bit too bright for me. Getting better. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lower the lighting even more. So let's do that. Alright, so I'm going to keep I'm just going to get this down to 20. Skylight. And then direction of light, we're going to take this to 24. And we'll keep it at 25. Actually, let's do 23 just in case. Alright. We're going to go ahead and hit render. And we'll come back when it's done. Alright, so here are the results. A little less bright, but we're going to just go ahead and just finish the rest with post-processing here. And that's how we're going to make it uh, darker. So I'm just going to quickly go here and I'm just going to go to 
uh, auto exposure. Actually, we're just going to go to down here to color grading, and we're just going to turn that down like that. Post exposure, give it a little bit more contrast, and this gives us more of a more of a creepy creepy look here, as you can see. So that's the, the bakery in a nutshell. Uh, it's a really good tool, really good for getting, uh, really good for baking, lighting, and getting quick results depending on your setup. So I highly recommend this, and if you want the bakery, I'll leave a link in the description so you can download it. Thank you.